Hey there, welcome to another edition of Kung Fu Physics where we are working our way through physics GRE problems, the practice exams. And I have another mechanics problem tonight. It is an easy problem. It uh, could be regarded as sort of a conceptual problem, but it is easily solvable with just freshman physics drawing a couple of free body diagrams and pretty straightforward to get where the answer is. The one I'd like to look at tonight is off of the 2001 exam, number 72. 2001, 72. It looks like that. Okay, so if you got it at home, get it out, follow along. Number 72. As usual, I would uh, look through those answers pretty quick and see if there's anything that I can get there. The answers are actually reassuring because I can see there are accelerations in there. We're looking for an acceleration. The uh, There is one answer that says zero and something like that always pops out at me because it gives me confidence that I can maybe either eliminate that zero or choose that zero as an answer pretty readily. And so I always like to see stuff like that grouped in with the answers. Um, in case, in case, worst case scenario, if I end up making a guess and just having to eliminate several answers rather than actually solve the problem, which can happen. I mean, with the time constraints, um, a, a guess with two or three answers eliminated uh, in some, in, in, it will take you a lot less time if you're only in a pinch and you're going through, um, you may be able to get a guess and may be able to make a point. Play the, play the, uh, play the numbers. Anyways, uh, we want to solve this problem though and, and do the walkthrough on uh, the best way to maybe solve it in a short amount of time. So going on, we would start into this problem here. Number 72, two identical blocks are connected by a spring. The combination is suspended at rest from a string attached to the ceiling as shown in this figure above. The string breaks suddenly. Immediately after the string breaks, what is the downward acceleration of the upper block? So it is important to recognize exactly what a question like this, or any of the questions for that matter, are asking and not screw it up by answering something that they're not asking for. The downward acceleration of the upper block. So we have this system here this string up on top goes snap and what is this block the one right up on top what does it immediately do now conceptually we can actually and uh, take out two to the answers right here is the acceleration gonna be zero we know gravity well we assume you have to make assumptions in problems like this but we assume gravity is acting down and is going to pull the block down uh, the spring we know has been um, deformed by being stretched so it is also going to be pulling down as well so you've got two forces acting on that block down and the string that was acting up is is all of a sudden gone certainly the blocks not just gonna hang there in the air with zero acceleration it's going to start accelerating down immediately we can drop answer a um, we can also drop answer B because answer B is less than the acceleration due to gravity which is sort of hinting that the spring is somehow pushing up a force pushing up from the spring which is not the answer for that matter we could probably drop answer C if, if you're super confident you could probably say well the string is the string pulling well that that may be that may trip you up a little bit but certainly you can eliminate two of the answers there okay so um, let's go on and just do this with free body diagrams to give you a, I think really easy way to look at this problem. So one of the first things I would do is draw the free body diagram of the situation before the string snaps. Okay, so I have the mass up top. Its mass is mg acting down. The spring is pulling down as well. So I want to label that as tension sp for tension in the string. And then the string, S-T-R-I-N-G, tension in the string, S-T, is acting up. And there is zero acceleration before the string snaps. 
right? So this thing is at equilibrium. It's just sitting there. Okay, that's all fine and good. Now, now another good thing to do is do the free body diagram, and you would have to be doing this pretty quickly to get this problem done in under two minutes. But if you did the free body diagram of this second mass, you would have its mass acting down, mg, and because this is a uh, the spring, the spring is not accelerating. So the forces on the spring are equal to zero as well. So uh, by that logic, this is also tension SP. I'll just leave it right there because I lined that up pretty well. That's labeled the same force. So if the acceleration is equal to zero down here on the mass in the bottom, then mg is equal in magnitude to tension SP the tension in the spring, right? So these are these are equal in magnitude, acting down. Okay, fine, that's all fine and good. Now, after this tension breaks, the instant after the spring breaks, I still have these two forces acting on. I have TSP, and I have the mass, mg of the top mass. And what I figured out from this is that TSP is also equal in magnitude to mg. So basically I have two forces acting with a magnitude of mg on this mass. And at this point we get acceleration equals what? What is the acceleration doing? And that's all we need to figure out, and we got if we got that, we got the problem beat. So um, just use Newton's second, sum the forces equals mass, and we want that acceleration. So acceleration equals the sum of the forces over the mass. I have two forces there, so I just do mg plus mg, and you would certainly not want to be as pedantic about this if you're actually doing the physics GRE, you want to take some shortcuts here because you can definitely get away with it. So you get 2mg over m equals 2g. Hopefully conceptually it makes sense in your head why this is the case. Uh, as the string breaks, the mass is going to be getting pulled on by that, uh, by that spring. And so it may throw you a little bit to think about it, but the top mass is actually going to accelerate down faster because the spring is going to be moving towards equilibrium and so the top mass is going to be accelerating a little bit faster strangely enough if you work it out the bottom mass its instantaneous acceleration is indeed zero right at that instance right after the top spring string breaks the spring is pulling that thing up at the same magnitude as the mass and the force of gravity is pulling it down so for an instant you get this spring kind of coming together and then you know I guess uh, haven't thought too much about this but as this whole system falls it's going to uh, oscillate kind of like that and I guess in a perfect world with no uh, with no friction in the spring or no air friction or anything like that I guess the thing would continue to oscillate as it fell it would continue to accelerate downward uh, in the gravitational field and it would oscillate as it did so. I think I've got that right. It doesn't matter if I got that right or not. We got to an answer there. The answer we came to was 2G. So we would glance in our answers there. That is answer E. And we would pick it and get on with our life. I think that's a pretty easy question. And ideally, I guess your ideal situation with a question like that would be to get it done in you know a minute and maybe give you a little bit more time on some of the harder questions so I'd say that's an easy question you can only really mess up something like that if you try to answer it conceptually and get it wrong in your head or if you read the problem wrong and answer something that was not what they were asking for like the the acceleration of the bottom block is zero and that is an answer. So if you mess that up, then you get to a wrong answer. But uh, that's that easy problem. And um, that's all for now. Study hard. And I'll catch you next time.